Get into faith over fear part two, Pastor Marco. Yes. What a great topic. You know, today we're going to be talking about really faith versus fear. We're going to do a comparison contrast of faith versus fear. We're going to come up with some, we're going to see some really strong um, tools yeah. for spiritual warfare. By the time we're done with this, this sermon, this teaching, your, your mindset will never be the same. We need to learn how to fight this fight of faith. It's a fight, not with people. That's why the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That means that we got to stop fighting with people and things and realize that we are in a spiritual battle. And the spiritual battle is fought with our declarations. Yeah. And most of all, it's fought in our mind. That's exactly right. Well, I love this topic. And as we're going to do a contrast today, um, what is faith? What is fear? The first one we're going to tackle tonight is faith. What is faith? We're going to tackle this, this idea of what is faith and what is fear. We're going to look at both of them as we look through a story in the Bible where God promises a group of people that there is a promised land waiting for them. Some of them enter, and some of them do not see the promise come to pass. So let's look at what faith is first. Yes. Faith is this, the belief that something good is going to happen. Wow. And is faith, a, faith is the belief that something good is going to happen. Where do we get this belief from? Well, we get the faith from the word of God. That means if, from the promises of God. See, the belief that something good is about to happen is built on focusing on the promises of God. Wow. So it's built on focusing on the promises of God. In the promises of God, there's built-in faith. Wow. So we need to locate the promises that have to do with our challenges. Wow. And in those promises, as we study them, study them and meditate on them, they will release faith. Damn. Let's look at this story yeah. in Numbers 13, 1, verse, verse 1 and 2. And it says this, the Lord now said to Moses. Mm -hmm. So now we hear God speaking wow. to a man. And he says this, send out men to explore the land of Canaan, the land I am given to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of the 12 ancestral tribes. So this scripture, what it's saying, if we could locate, yeah. locate yeah. the promise. The promise is this, the land I am given to the Israelites. Wow. So God speaks to Moses and he says this, tell the lead, get some yeah. leaders to go look at the land, not that I might give them. No. It's a promise. The land I already gave them. Wow. It is there. Go explore what I've given you. Wow, that's and good. When we explore the promises of God and we study the yeah. promises of God, this is not something that God is trying to get us. This is something Jesus has already paid for. Wow. And our part is to believe the promises of God. I love it. So if somebody's going through something right now, they're going through a tough time. Um, I'm seeing the reports again of people losing their jobs. Maybe someone's watching right now. Um, you're saying to find the promise. So if they're going through something, they find a promise in God's word. Yeah, find a promise that matches up with your challenge. God promised these Israelites that there was a land he was giving them. A land, the scripture says, a land flowing with milk and honey. It was even called the promised land. I don't know what your promised land is. Maybe your promised land is a restoration of your marriage. Maybe your promised land is, is a healing. Maybe your promised land is freedom. Maybe your promised land, it would, I don't know what your promised land is. Right. Maybe it's a job because right now you got released from your job and you're wondering how am I going to get through this season? Right. But whatever your promise is, there's a scripture that matches up with your, with, with your challenge. Man, I love that. Again, we're talking about faith versus fear. So you're saying that faith is the belief that something good is going to happen. I love the statement you put down. The promises of God happen because we believe what God has told us. Right. Can you elaborate on that? There's no promise that will ever come true without someone believing it. Mm. So God makes promises. Our job is not to make the promise happen. Our job is to believe the promise. Right, love that. And when we believe the promise, that's what causes it to happen. Man. The enemy knows that if he could 
conquer our fear, right. then he's conquered our result. I mean, conquered our faith, our faith, then he's conquered our results. Wow. But let's look at the scripture yeah. in Romans 4, 17. That is what the scriptures mean when God told him. Look what wow. the scripture says. When God told him, there's a there it goes. There's gonna be a promise. There God it. speaks and God speaks in promises yes. and commands. And it says this: I have made you the father of many nations. There's the promise. Abraham is a man that he doesn't have any children, and God is promising him wow. that he will have children. Wow. This happened because, because Abraham believed. Now it yeah. happened because Abraham believed. So what is faith? The belief that something good yeah. is going to happen. Hey, Abraham, he didn't have any children. How old was Abraham and his wife roughly around? Well, he was up to 100 years old, and he had no children. But he was still relying and standing on a promise. Man, that's powerful. This happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. So, wow. so the promise of having children happened. How did it happen? Yeah. It happened because he believed. Wow, that's good. So faith is a belief that something good is going to happen now versus what is fear? Fear is the belief that something bad is going to happen. So faith is a belief that something good is going to happen. And where do we get this faith from? We get this faith from the, the promises, promises or the word of God. Now, yeah. fear is a belief that something bad is going to happen. Yeah. So we need to be careful that we don't allow what we see to conquer what we've heard or what we've studied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fear, we covered this last week, is demonic faith. Fear will not allow us to have faith and will not allow us to participate in the promises of God. Wow, fear is demonic faith. So fear is belief. So it kind of sounds the same. Yeah. Faith, you're believing in something. Fear, you're believing in something. But then it's the complete opposite. Faith and fear are the same, they're, they're the same, but they're yeah. totally different. They're the same that they're a belief, but they're totally different because they're opposite beliefs. Wow. One is faith. One is a belief that thing, good, something good is going to happen. Right, right. Fear is a belief that something bad is going to happen. Wow. So let, let's say you're at a job, for example, just really quick. You're at a job and you're hearing that there's going to be a lot of layoffs. How do you apply this? You're hearing around the company. Maybe the boss even brought everybody in, hey, there might be some layoffs. How do you, how do you go from that meeting, how do you start thinking like this? Well, well that meeting, it can be a fear meeting. Right. That means you heard some bad news, and then you put yourself in the picture. Mm. And you start thinking, maybe or probably I'm the one that's going to get laid off. And you start thinking about that, and then if you don't watch it, that fear thought is like a train. They, they call it a train of thoughts. That thought can actually take you to a place that you start thinking about, you seeing yourself unemployed, you're seeing yourself losing your house, you're seeing yourself not be able to eat. Yeah. You're struggling because fear is beginning to take over yeah. your mind. Wow. So how do we deal with that? Yeah, yeah. How we deal with that is go back to the promises of God. Yes. We get our faith from the promises of God. So we go to the promises of God that says this, that the Lord, our God, he's the one yes. to supply our needs according yes. to his riches and glory. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Love it. I ask and I shall receive. Yeah, I've it. never seen the righteous begging for bread. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what this, so we have to go back to the promises of God yeah. to build our faith and conquer those thoughts <laughs> that, are, that, are get, that want us to believe Something yeah, bad is ready yeah, to happen. Exactly. This look, it, it, we're talking about fear now. Um, we go back to Numbers chapter 13. The people explore the land. Look at Numbers 13, 25, talking about fear. After exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel. Okay. So God sends them out yeah. to explore the land that he was giving them. Right. They're, they're coming back, and they're given a report now. They're given right. a report of what God has given them. Okay. Wow. So good. Return to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel, Kadesh, in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the whole community that what they had seen and showed them the fruit they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. We enter the land you sent us to explore, and it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here's the kind of fruit it produces. So they come back, and they do what the first part. Yeah. 
God told them to go into the land and do this and check it out. And when they saw the land that God was giving them, it was called the promised land. This was a land that had vineyards that they never planted. Yeah. It had fruit trees that they never saw grow up. Yeah. And it had buildings and cities and homes that they never built. And this is what God was saying. I'm ready to transfer that wealth to you. Wow. You're in a transition. Go look at what I'm giving you. And when they came back, they said, indeed, it is a land that's flowing with milk and honey. Yeah. It has fruit vineyard, it has vineyards, it has fruit, yeah. it has fortified cities. But, but they came back with another report that they were not supposed to be focused on. That's verse Let's 28. Read. Yeah, verse 28. Here comes the fear. But the people living there are powerful, right. and their towns are large and fortified. We even see giants there, the descendants of Hanak. Yeah. And the Am Amalekites. Amalekites live in the Negev, and the Hittites and Jebusites and Amorites live in, hill, in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Med Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. But look at this. They, they start off with a report about the land, but really it's only one little sentence. Yeah. But then they go on to give a whole discourse Man. about the enemy and how the cities are fortified, how it looks like it's impossible to conquer or receive yeah. the land that God was giving them. Man. God did not tell them to go in there and get a report on how big the enemy was. Right. But he was just, he said, go in there and look at the land I am giving you. See, the Man. belief that something bad is going to happen is built by focusing on the problem, mm. not, not the promise. You That's focus it. on the problem, not the promise. It's so easy to focus on the problem. It's so easy to focus on the bad news. I'll tell you why. Wow. We're surrounded by it. Yeah, of course. We're, Even we're now surrounded by bad news. We're, surround, we're surrounded by, yeah. by difficulties and yeah. challenges. Oh, Life yeah. is full of them. Of course. But if we don't learn how to fight, and focusing on the promises of God, yeah. we have nothing to fight with. Man. So what ends up happening, the fear takes over our minds. And when it takes over our minds, all we could believe for now, yeah. because fear is negative faith, right, right. all we have now is belief that something bad is going to happen. And the evidence is everything I'm looking at. Yeah, exactly. We do not get our evidence by what Man. we look at. We get our evidence from the word of God. Wow. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Right. So where do we get our evidence that something good is about to happen? We go to the word of God. We go to the promises of God. Man, I love that. That's what the Bible says. We walk by faith, not by sight. During this COVID-19, we're constantly being bombarded, seeing different things, seeing images, seeing reports. I love that. Now let's go back to faith. Faith. Faith is a mindset of victory. Right. Can you explain that? So now we covered fa faith is the belief that something's good ready to happen. Right. Fear is the is belief that something bad's ready to happen. Now let's go back to faith. Faith is a mindset of victory. Faith is a mindset of victory that leads to victory. Read Numbers 13, yeah, number 30, 13 30, 30, I love this. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. So now these people come with their report. They're <laughs> right. giants in the land. You know, yeah. as the more you focus on the problem, you know what happens? The bigger it gets. Bigger. And if all you're talking about and all I'm talking about is my problems, my difficulties, my hurts, my failures, this is what, this is what begins yeah. to happen. I begin just to believe that. Right. We need to quiet that voice. That's good. If we don't quiet that voice, it will keep on speaking loud and clear. Ooh. Caleb does some spiritual warfare here. Yeah, he and the first thing he says, but he tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Moses. Wow. He said, be quiet. Yeah. And how he tried to quiet the people is speaking faith over fear. That's let's see what good. Caleb says. Caleb says, let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certain, certainly conquer it. Wow. Man. He begins to proclaim, and he didn't lightly say this. It's an exclamation yeah. point. He said, we can, he goes, let's go back and get the land that God promised us. Where did he get this type of faith from? Well, he got this type of faith from one place, the, what the Lord, the Lord said. said. And now he said, we can certainly conquer it. Now he has wow. a victory mindset. Yes. And how do we know he has a victory mindset? Because when you have a victorious mindset, you speak victorious wow, words. That's a good point. That's how say, we know when we're, when we're, wow. when we're walking in yeah. victory or we're headed towards victory 
Our words don't betray us. Our words are victorious, and this is what happens. We start ending up yeah. living a life that's victorious. Man, I love that. We quiet the voice of fear by speaking God's word and faith over it. All the promises are in Jesus Christ. These promises, Jesus already paid for them. Yeah. It's yeah, already man. paid. All the promises of the Lord are yes and amen. He goes, it's yes, it's already done, it's finished. And in Philippians 4, 13, it, it's a proclamation. Yeah. This is what mindsets of victory, faith with a, is a mindset of victory. Yeah. This is what it says, Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ because he is the one who gives me strength. Man, and I the love focus that. is on Christ. I love not that. on our strength, mm -mm. not on our abilities, but on the strength and the power of Christ. Yeah. You know what that means? That whatever we're going through, we can get through this and we are more than conquerors through the strength that we receive through our relationship with Christ and his word. I the word it. will make you strong. Yeah, it will. So if we're not relying on Christ, we're relying on ourselves. What's going to happen? What takes place? We well, rely on ourselves. Well, you know what the Bible says? Here we go, promise yeah. again. Not by might, nor by power, but Man. by my spirit, yes. saith the Lord. Mm. What he was saying, don't depend on your own strength. Don't depend on the economy. Yes. Don't depend on anything that you see. People will let you down. But it says this, depend on the spirit of God. Not yes. by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Man, we can do that. this through I the power it. of Christ. That's exactly right. I love this statement you put down. A victorious mindset leads to a victorious life. Right. Man, I love that. Before we live a victorious life, we must have a victorious mindset. I would say the opposite. If we have a defeated mindset, there's no way we could live a victorious life. It Man. is impossible. That's right. In Numbers 14, 24, yeah. we see the conclusion to Caleb's faith. Yeah. Caleb believed that something good was going to happen. Yeah. Caleb had a victorious mindset. He, he said, we can certainly conquer it. Where did he get this faith yeah. from? The promises, promises of, God. of God. But look at the end result of Caleb's journey. And yeah. it says in Numbers 14, 24, but my servant Caleb, this is God speaking over Caleb, but my servant Caleb has a different attitude, attitude. than the others have. There it goes. The scripture is saying that Caleb had a different mindset than the other spies had. The wow. other spies had mindsets yeah of defeat. He had a mindset of victory. His faith was in God. Yes. He says, he has remained loyal to me, so I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of the land. Man. What's so cool about this scripture is saying because of his faith, God yeah. looked at his as loyalty. Yeah, wow. When, when we're walking in doubt that. and fear, he looks at it at as this loyalty. Yeah. Do you mean, Man. and God, God was talking to yeah. the people, do you mean after I delivered you out of being slaves for 400 years, I delivered you and set you free, parted the Red Sea, that now I'm giving you a promise to go into a promised land, you're doubting me? And when he wow. looked at it as this loyal, yeah, or, yeah. But, but, but God looked at Caleb's yeah. life as loyal. And he says, because you were loyal and you kept the faith, and you believe my promise, this is what I'll do. I'll bring you into the land you explored. Yes. But not only you, your kids too. Wow. You know what he was talking, you know what that's called? Yeah. A generational, generational blessing. blessing. Man, his descendants will possess their full share full of share. that land. Not partial share, Ooh. full share. So his thinking as a leader was going to affect everyone that was connected to him. Wow. That's why it's so and, important right. as leaders, as parents, we're directing our, our families, we're direct leaders, we're directing our church, your boss, you're directing your company. It's very important for the leaders to keep this mindset of victory. And it didn't matter what was going on. It didn't matter yeah. how strong the enemy was. That had nothing to do yeah. with the promise of God because the promises of God stand all on their own. God yeah. is faithful. He, he, wherever he sends his word out, it will accomplish everything right. he sent it out to do. Man. If God says this, if the word of God promises this, who the son sets free is free indeed. It doesn't matter how strong your addiction is. When Jesus sets you free and you stand on that promise, you'll be free. It doesn't matter how deep your sin is. The Bible says a promise, 
God is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteous, righteousness. If we'll just confess our sins, he will forgive us. Love it's it. done. Man, because it. when God makes a promise, in that promise is faith. That's right. And in that promise is the power to bring it to pass. Wow, I love that. I like that statement you put down. God promises to give us victory over everything we are facing through our faith in Jesus Christ. You have a scripture there, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. What does the scripture say? Thanks be to God. Who gives us the victory. Who gives us the victory. Wow. Right. Making us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Man, I love that. And where is the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ? There's a key word, Lord. We must make Jesus our Lord if we're going to walk in the victory. He gives us the promise. Man. Locate the promise in the scripture. Thanks be to God, promise, yes. who gives us the victory, victory, making us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. The key to having victory or experiencing victory yes. and having this promise fulfilled in our lives is this, making Jesus the Lord of our lives. Yes. This is not a positive, positive speaking seminar, positive mindset seminar. This is a spiritual warfare class. And the only way we're going to get victory again is through making Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's it. why the yes. Bible says, submit to God, submit. resist the devil, and then he'll flee. That's exactly but you cannot right. resist a devil if you've not submitted to the power of wow, God first. Wow, I love that. Because that's a key word in that scripture, through our Lord, right. Jesus Christ. It didn't say just Jesus it Christ. It could have said Jesus Christ in scripture, but it says through our Lord. And it's personal, our Lord. If our Jesus Lord. is your Lord, because we got to get rid of all this sloppy Christianity. Yeah. That's it. He's my savior, but he's not my Lord. He had no such thing. <laughs> no. Because the only way for Jesus to be your Lord is this. We got we to gotta let go, repent of everything else that's taken first place Man. or lordship or mastery over our lives. I love it. I got to turn away from uh, my little gods yeah. or yeah. my sin or yes. the things that's been ruling my life and turn to the real God. I love Jesus, it. My, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Yes. So faith is a mindset of victory. Right. Now we're going to go back to fear versus fear is a mindset of defeat. Right. Can you explain that? Fear is a mindset. So faith is a mindset of victory that leads to victory. Right. When we have a victory mindset, mm -hmm. you'll experience victory just like Caleb. Right. The victory is, is seeing the promises of God come to pass. I love but it. But fear is a mindset of defeat. Ac accepting this mindset of fear is accepting defeat wow, when they come good. together. That's Fear good. and defeat come together. Yeah. Faith and victory come together. Right. What defeated Israel was not the power of the enemy or their circumstances they were facing, but they were taught. But, but what defeated them is what they, thought what they thought and what they said about their enemy wow. and what they said about their circumstance yeah, yeah, yeah. and what they said about God. Man. See, the, to believe fear is, to, is not to believe God. Wow, God good. will never, we will never get God's results believing the enemy's lies. Man, that's There's a lot good. that's been said that's there. That's good. Lots been said yeah, there, yeah. but the idea, fear is a mindset, mindset. of defeat. Yeah. Now let's look at these P, the, the Israelites' yeah. mindset. Yeah, we see Caleb full of faith, and now we go back to fear the people, Numbers 13, 31, but the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. Yeah. We can't go up against them. There's an exclamation point. They were like screaming it. Caleb was screaming one thing, and these other guys were screaming, we can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. Look what they're saying. This is what they're saying. Yeah. Caleb says, let's go up at once. We can certainly conquer them. Yeah. And it, it was a belief. It was a belief. And it was a proclamation. Yeah. They have a belief. Yeah. And, and they're... they're they're as, they're as aggressive as Caleb yeah, is. they are. But, they're, but they believe this. We can't go up yeah. against them. It's a belief. Yeah. They are stronger than we are. What did they believe in? Where did they get all this fear from? Mm -hmm. They got this fear by focusing on the problem, focusing on the enemy, and, and, uh, and talking to themselves yeah, yeah. about the problem instead of quoting the promise. Yeah, yeah. It's what good. gets me through a difficult time, yeah. what gets me through challenges is there's only one thing that's gonna get me through. It's faith.
faith in the promises of Promise. God. And I got to think about this because yeah. I have promises that I'm standing on right now. That's right. Right now, me and Robert are, are, are getting ready. It's almost a yeah. one-year an anniversary of my mother passing away. That's right. And there's a big promise that God yeah. has given me. Yeah. He's given me prom a, a victory, a promise, victory yes. over sin, promise of victory over right. sin. He's given me promises of healing. Yes. But this is a big promise that, that we're all waiting for, and I'm uh, especially yes. waiting for, oh, yeah, me too. especially the mamas in heaven. I know. That one day when Jesus returns, yes. he's not going to come alone, no. but he's going to come back with my mama, That's right. with believers. That's right. And one day we'll be united. Amen. And we will be the Lord. We will be with the Lord forever. Amen. Where Jesus is, we will be with him. That's right. And we're standing on the promises of yes. God. There's a promise that says to be absent of the body is to be present, present of the Lord. the Lord. We have a promise. Amen. Our mother is with the Lord. And one day yes. when Jesus comes back, Amen. we will be with the Lord. Amen. And that's what gets me through yes, me too. difficult times. That's because right. it can be sad because you start meditating just on the loss. Yeah, exactly. But, I, but if I focus just on the loss, you know yeah. what happens? Sadness settles yeah, in. That's right. Depression settles in. That's right. Hopelessness settles in. So you know what I do? I take a scripture yes. and I say it over myself, even when I don't feel it. One day I'm going to see my yes. mama again. Amen. How do I get through it? The promise the of promise, God. I love that. But they didn't stand on no, the they promise. Didn't. They were defeated. Oh, fears, we can't go big, up against them. Stronger. Right. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw there were huge. All the people. Were All huge. the people. You know what happens when we start focusing Man. our problem? It gets bigger. Wow. What do you mean everybody's huge? That's that, a don't good even, point. That, that don't even make sense. Yeah, everybody so everybody's giant. huge. Everybody was, everybody was a giant. That's yeah. not true. Everybody wasn't a yeah. giant. It, but this is what happens with fear does. Fear highlights the negative. Man. Fear highlights the danger. That's good. Fear highlights the problem. Yeah. Faith highlights Jesus. Jesus. Faith highlights the word. Wow. Faith highlights the solution. Man. Faith highlights the victory. Yes. And that's why in scripture, there was a, there was a, a army that was surrounding Elijah. And he said, yeah. and his servant was freaked out. Yeah. His arm was surrounding them. Yeah. And then the prophet says, open his eyes. Right. That he will see there's more for us that's than right. against us. Because faith will show us. Yeah. What's for us? Man. Fear will just show us what's against Man, us. Man, that's good. Look at verse 33. We even saw giants there, the sense of Anak. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers, and that's the way they thought too. Wow. So th they saw themselves now defeated. Yeah. The, the land, we, anybody goes there, they're going to be devoured. So they saw themselves devoured. They saw themselves, that they, they saw themselves defeated. Yeah. We can't. They're stronger than we are. But notice in all this talk, there's not one mention of scripture. Scripture, yeah. There's not one mention of the promise. Yeah, where's the promise? There's not one mention of God. Wow. And what fear will not allow you to do is include God in Man, your conversation or include good. God in your mindset. This, we got to fight this because yes, right. fear Warfare. is more dangerous than any other sin. Yes, it is. Because fear is full of doubt. Yes. And there's no way for us to be saved, have victory, be free without faith. Man, if fear exactly conquers right. our life, this is basically what we're yeah. saying. Satan has conquered Ooh, our life. That's powerful. A defeated mindset, you put the statement here, a defeated mindset speaks words of defeat. Right. Wow, I love that. We will have what we believe and say, good or bad. We can turn it around by not letting fear rule your mouth. Look at this. Love a defeated that. mindset speaks words of defeat. Exactly so how right. do we know when someone has a defeated mindset? It's set on this fear. How, how do we know? Their mouth, their mouth begins to speak defeated words. Wow. Look at Numbers 14. Look, look at I their words. That. I mean, they spoke one sentence. Yeah. Yes, the land is flowing yeah. milk, honey, here's the fruit. Yeah. And then they go on, on a whole chapter talking about the enemy and their losses and their defeat. Look, uh, how, look how they describe a defeat that's yeah. never happened. It's never happened. They're actually describing a battle that they've lost that they never fought. Oh, my gosh. I exactly wonder how many battles we've lost that we just never fought. We never even fought just by our words, what we're saying. Look at this. Numbers 14, yeah. Then the whole community began weeping aloud, and they cried all night. Cried Who are they night. crying about? You know, because you know what I've learned about this, Rob? Is that fear is an emotion yeah. as well. Wow. As a matter of, fear is an unpleasant emotion caused wow. by your belief that something bad is ready to happen. An emotion. It's an emotion as well. So they're wow. believing something bad is going to happen. They're not just believing it. They're feeling they're it. They're feeling it. They're feeling like they've already lost and defeated. They're crying all yeah. night. 
My gosh, yeah, crying. And all they have to do is go to the promise. Go to the promise, what and, God and said. God, you know what God's probably doing? What are you guys crying Shh. about? I, I just gave you a promise. Could it be right now you're crying about something and you should be praising your way through wow. it? And God is saying, God, why are you crying? Lord. Stand on my promise. Stand on my word. I will supply your need. I will heal you. I will save you. I will save your loved one. Yeah. I will save your husband. I will save your child. I will restore you. It's okay. Yes. I'm with you. You're not alone. Don't fear. Wow, I love that. The defeated mindset speak words of defeat. They're speaking words. Yeah. If only we had died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? So do they have a defeated mindset? Yes, they do. Do they now, see themselves dead? Yes, they do. Now right. they're including God. Why did God bring us here? Right. We can even get to the point now where almost blaming God now for things that are happening in our lives and things that not even happening. <laughs> They're making it up. It hasn't happened. They haven't fought right. yet. Wow. I love this last statement you put down. A defeated mindset leads to a defeated life. That's the only place a defeated mindset could take you. Now, they couldn't get the promise because the only way to go into the promised land is through faith, the law yeah. of faith that we covered last yeah. week. The kingdom of heaven is ruled by the law of faith. Yeah. We, can re we could only access the promises of God, the kingdom of God through faith. Man. The only thing that they could access was the kingdom of Satan, yeah. which is full of defeat, loss, pain, and suffering. And this is what the scripture says Man. in Numbers 14, 30. Yes. They received what they believed and they Man. received what they confessed. That's exactly right. You will not enter and occupy the land Swore. I swore to give you. Now, God speaks to him. He Man. told Caleb, you're going to enter in because Man. you're loyal. Yeah. You believe. But he, now he's speaking to them. You will not enter the land and occupy the land I swore to give you. The, the only exceptions will be Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Wow. Verse 43, when you face the Malachites and the Canaanites in battle, you, you will, be, will slaughtered. be slaughtered. So Man. they would be defeated. Why would they be defeated? Not because God didn't have the power. No. No. They would be defeated because they believed believe they would be defeated. defeated. In verse 45, the, then the Malachites Man. and the Canaanites who live in those hills came down and attacked them and chased them back as far as Hormah. I want wow. you to think about this. That the enemy was holding back. Yeah. And now he had permission to attack oh based on gosh. their fear and their mindset. Gosh. I wonder what demons yeah. def of defeat of depression, of discouragement, already, and destruction are ready to be released in our lives. Yeah. And they have permission because we believe we something bad is going to happen. Yeah. We do not believe the word of God wow. and the promises of God. Wow. And why we're setting ourselves up for an attack yeah. of the enemy. That's exactly wow. right, man. I love this word that God has given us. And again, today we're talking about faith versus fear. Faith is a mindset of victory we talked about. Um, fear is a mindset of defeat. It's a mindset. And right now during COVID-19 and things that we're facing in our personal lives right now, the enemy is trying to take our faith. And really, what this message is really speaking to me right now too, this is warfare. Right, we're in warfare. Yeah. We're in warfare right now for our families. Yeah. We're in warfare right now in keeping our faith and keeping and focusing on the promises of God. Can you close us out with a final word, a final statement? And we're going to pray but for some people as well. Just think about this. Man. Instead of receiving the promises of God, these yeah. people, they received the promise of fear. They received the prom Fear was promising defeat, that they would die, yeah. that they would be slaughtered. It promised that. Yeah. And they believed in the promise of Satan yeah. instead of believing in the promise of God. Man. What they believe and spoke, they received. They received. That's it. what they did. Wow. You know, and we're learning how to fight this fight of faith. That's right. And I pray that we learn this together. Yes, yes. Life doesn't always come to us the way we expect it in the time and we expect. That's why we need some faith. Yes. I've learned this through life. Life doesn't get easier. We're going to have to get stronger. That's right. And we're going to have to get stronger in our faith, yes. our belief. Can our faith grow? Yes. Right. How does our faith grow? as we study and locate the promises of God. Yes. I don't know what your need is today, but whatever the need is, there's a promise that correlates with your challenge. And you could stand in that promise because God's word never returns void or it never returns not accomplishing what he promised that he would do. 
So if you're here, if you're, if you're listening today, do you know that your life can turn around today? And maybe you've been thinking, man, I've been living a life full of fear. I, I've been really believing that something bad is going to happen. I, it's always tormenting me. I can't sleep at night. I'm struggling. We've all been there. I got to fight it every single day. Thoughts that we're, it's a daily fight. Or maybe you're saying, Pastor, I realize that in order for me to have victory, I need to do something. I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life. And that's a choice as well. Because if Jesus is not our Lord, this is, what, this is the truth. Fear and the enemy is our Lord. There's yeah, things that true. take over our lives. Right. And you're saying, Pastor, I want to be free. I'm tired of the addiction. I'm tired of the depression. I'm tired of the fear. I'm tired of the worry. I got good news for you. Jesus paid the price for every sin you've ever committed so you could have a brand new life. You don't need to live under a curse and live under fear because you can live in faith. Yes. Trust in God and allow God to be your shepherd and your Lord. He loves you so much. Today's your day to open up your life and your heart to Jesus. The Bible says this, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever, look at this, believeth in him, believeth in his promise, will not perish. Promise, you will not perish. You will not be destroyed. You will not be defeated. You will not end up separated from God forever in a hell that's real. But you'll be, you'll have eternal life, a promise of God. Pastor yes. Robert, could you lead us in prayer right yeah, now? For sure. yeah, Someone might want to receive Jesus as their Lord yes. and Savior. And that's the first step. Victory through Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, let's do that right now. Let's make the Lord... Jesus Christ, your personal Lord, your personal Savior. If you want to be forgiven of your sins, if you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, if you want that faith, it starts with Jesus. We're going to renounce even fear in this prayer as well. Maybe you got a, a situation you're fearful right now. We're going to renounce that in the name of Jesus. So you can bow your head and close your eyes wherever you're at right now. If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Repeat after me. Say, yes. Jesus, Jesus, I repent. I repent. And I receive forgiveness. And I receive forgiveness. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. And I make you. And I make you. The Lord of my life. The Lord of my life. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank for you. For dying on the cross for me. For dying on the cross Today, for me. I am saved. Today, I'm saved. I am born again. I'm born again. Because I put my faith. Because I put place in, my you, in you, Jesus. Jesus. I renounce fear. I renounce fear. I command fear. I command fear. To leave my mind. To leave my mind. To leave my mouth. To leave my mouth. I speak faith. I speak faith. I speak life. I speak life. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. For coming into my life. For coming into my life. I am saved. I am saved. I am born again. I'm born again. I am on my way to heaven. I'm on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. amen.